So we are just going to now cover one last topic, which is uh, just a bit more generalization of uh, our elementary renewal theorem, which is called renewal reward theorem. See like uh, in uh, in in the setup when we consider elementary reward theorem, right? We kind of uh, treated all cycles to have kind of uh, uh, similar value. Okay, all cycles when I return from state J to again state J, that is like kind of completing one cycle, again going from J to uh, again state J, that is completing one cycle, and all. So these are cycles, right? But what could happen that uh, when you are uh, looking at some applications, when you are going from this state to this state again, state J to state J again, in between you could be uh, accruing some reward or some cost. So for example, uh, so in the battery case, right, when you when your battery went from full charge to discharge that completed one cycle, you may be interested in how much uh, my lamp burnt with that battery in that case. So maybe the, let us say you are, your battery is powering something. For time being, okay, time being let us assume your battery is uh, powering some electrical vehicle. Right, so when your battery is powering some electrical vehicle, it may be moving some distance. Right, so when battery goes from full charge to zero charge, your uh, vehicle might have covered some distance. The distance covered by your vehicle may be kind of reward for you. Right, now you want to basically measure per each, and that could be random. That could be. Uh, again random because every time you charge your uh, battery until it goes to zero right the amount of the distance that your vehicle traveled could be modeled as a stochastic variable right it's not always it need not be det deterministic because when you charge your battery till it goes zero that time it could have gone through tra different routes which could be having different level of traffics because of that it is not necessary that between when from full charge to discharge full discharge it has to uh, travel the same amount of distance maybe it traveled but that is a possibility that it could be stochastic also now now in that case you may be interested in what is the average reward i accumulated per cycle Okay, so let us say the total in, in this example, uh, the total distance traveled, average total distance traveled. Okay, uh, so how we are going to characterize such things? So, such questions can be again answered based on a similar setup, but we have to bring in the notion of reward associated with each cycle. So, let us try to formalize that. Okay, now basically simply now consider a renewal process. Okay, consider. Okay. 
So notice that now I am going to just consider an IID sequence Xn. I am not going to distinguish the first cycle and the rest of the cycles. So it is just like all the cycles are same. Okay. Now associated with each cycle xj. Now I am going to call this as cycle, one life cycle, one uh, what we called it as uh, xjs we called as lifetimes, right? One lifetime as I am going to call it as one cycle associated with each cycle xj is our reward. Rj. Okay. And uh, Rj is also IID. So with each cycle J, there is an associated reward Rj. And this uh, reward process is I am also going to assume as IID. And also combiningly I can write this process as RII. Where in each cycle there are two things. One is the length of the cycle and associated reward. Okay. But this reward may depend on the length of the cycle. So Rn could be function of Xn that is it could be dependent of Xn but it is independent of other cycles and other rewards. So this Rn it just is a function of Xn. In that way this is going to be again an IID process for each n. So now if you are going to treat this as one quantity, this quantity let us say I call this as simply Yn which consists of Xn and Yn and if I treat this as a, no let us call it Z, Z is also used, uh, let us call W. This W is an again an IID process where Wn corresponds to Xn and Yn. Okay. Now, I am interested in accumulated reward, right? What I mean, as I said, in the in the electrical vehicle example, if I have run it for uh, run my vehicle for let's say till time t, what is my accumulated reward till that time? So, in that in the in the vehicle example, electrical vehicle example, R n is the let's say total distance you travel when your battery lasted for X n duration. Okay. So now how can how, how to define my total reward over a time t. Okay. So for example, let us say you have vehicle running and you want to define your reward after let us say t equals to 10 days. So one natural way to do is, okay, you just see in those 10 days how many cycles have completed. That is how many times you have replaced your battery and then just add the rewards you got in each of the cycles, right. And here you have to be a bit more specific because when you say 10th day, maybe the battery is just replaced yesterday and that battery is still running when you are looked at the 10th day. So one possibility is you can define that the reward till time 10th day is reward I accumulated till the completion of previous cycle or you could simply define that when I say my reward this reward is I obtain when I start the cycle 
or other possibilities is when I end the cycle, right. For example, in the electrical vehicle case, when you completely charge your battery and put it in the vehicle, right, in the beginning you have not got anything, right, only when you, let us say when your battery complete, then you look at how much distance you have covered, after battery completely discharged, then you can say this is the total reward I got. In, in this case, you are defining your reward at the end of the cycle or there could be some cases where you could say that my re, I got the reward as soon as this cycle started, okay. So, so suppose you reward is obtained at the beginning of each cycle. So then what you can do, the total reward you accumulate till time t can be defined as summation of r n, n equals to 1 to m of What is M of T indicates here? Number of cycles that have been completely covered till time 0 to T, right? And it might be possible that the next cycle would have already started within that time T. But when it has started, you are already including that reward in the, in this cycle because you are getting this reward as soon as the cycle starts, right? So that is why you are going to included it here. Now reward is obtained at the end of each cycle. So if you are going to get the reward only at the end of the cycle, how you are going to define your total reward? Summation n equals to 1 to just empty, right? Because you know that exactly empty number of cycles have been completed till time t and that is why I have to include only that many because I am getting reward only at the end of the cycles. That means I should only care about those cycles which are completed within the interval 0 t. Whereas when I defined here, when the rewards I get at the beginning of the cycle, when I define C of t, I have to worry about all the cycles that have already begun within the interval 0 to t, right? Okay. So this is two possibilities depending on your applications, maybe you can uh, define it differently. So let us take these two cases here. So your reward has ended, let us say this is your time t, right? This is your time t till this time t and uh, let us say these are your cycles. One cycle went like this, another cycle went like this, another went and you just finished like this. Now, we are saying beginning, right, of this. Now, if it has ended this, the next one has actually started in the same instance, right, that gets included there. So, that is why that empty plus 1 uh, has to be here. So, okay, if it is, this guy is ended here, because of this continuity, the other guy is also at the end of this, right, at T, it has started, right. So, because this guy started right at t, that n plus 1th, beginning of the n plus 1th is actually happening till time, right, till t. So, that is what it has to be in this, right. So, this is a, this is a boundary case. Most of the times what will happen, maybe this guy will end and that guy will go to the next one. 
So in this things it is clear. Only when this happens, it is happening exactly at time, but we can by our definition it has to be included here. Okay. Now I have defined total cost till time t and now I want to see what is my average cost. Okay, so suppose I am interested in knowing how my cost per unit time changes. So CT is what? CT is the accumulated reward time T and I am dividing it by T that means my average I am basically looking at my average reward till time T right. Okay. So I mean you can imagine many applications where this will fit in. Uh, for example, if you have a let us say you are you are running a factory where you have machine right like machines uh, needs lot of maintenance and uh, you want them to be working because if they are stopping that means you are stopping your production. So what you can do is uh, okay there are some critical machines in your entire uh, operations which need to be really running you do not want them to be down at any time. So you can what you can do is okay you see okay I, I repair them and till the time they go bad this critical components I am still operating right when they go bad yeah I am in bad shape but uh, let us assume as soon as they go bad I am going to replace them with the new one and again my operation starts. But during the time they are operating they are producing something and that production is going to be like a monetary benefit for you. Let us say while they were uh, operating they were uh, produced let us say 100, pack, 100 items that 100 items is like some benefit reward for you right during the time of their operation. Again when they go down and you replace them next till the time they go bad again they would have produced another set of items that is another set of rewards for you. Now what you want to see is what is the total items I produced uh, I am now interest this is the total items I produced till time t and I am interested in average number of items I produce. Now so this is going to kind of give you a sense of based on your uh, maintenance and operations how cycle how the cycle of this operation of your critical component is changing and that is going to affect this okay so let's see uh, this is the average uh, so uh, average reward you want to see so we want to analyze what is the limit what is this value is going to be See often what happens you might have seen that uh, while we are doing all the studies we happily let t go to infinity n go to infinity right. Why is that like we know that uh, that is a kind of observe to do right letting n go to infinity camera t go to infinity. So uh, these are basically basically because to get some intuition doing just analysis. If you want to find this what is the value of this at a finite t it is very hard. Maybe we, we can do that but that needs more sophistication. This course is not for that if for that you need to more machinery with whatever machinery we did you are already bored with that right. So but with whatever machinery we have we can only do such analysis. To if you want to really understand okay for every t kya hota, I do not want what happens at n equals to infinity as t equals to infinity I want it at some finite time that is really what I am interested uh, for that uh, uh, the current tools what we study in this course is not enough you need to go much much beyond that. So that is what like with whatever we have and whatever we, we can say we can only do this what we call as limiting regime or asymptotic regime okay but 
it is not still bad because they still give you some kind of intuition what is happening. So okay, uh, now comes this theorem is inequal to what? So it says that if let us say Xn Rn is going to be is an IID so this one we are going to call it as when we have this we call it as renewal reward process. So when there is a reward associated with the process we will call it renewal reward process is an IID renewal reward process with expectation of R1 is finite and expectation of R1 is 0 and finite. Then it says T by T goes to any guess? Ah, good. So, you are a good guesser. So, expectation of R1 you said or R1, okay? Divided by expectation of X1. Q? When you guess, do not ask you, right? So, that is why we say yes or no, we ask prove or disprove. So, this is. Uh, with probability 1 and uh, again this if you are going to look at. So, if I take the expectation of this, what is the limit? It is same right. So, when C of T is uh, this is going to be the same. This is expectation sequence. So, what we are saying? The average reward goes to expectation of R1 divided by expectation of X1. What is expectation of R1? This is the reward per cycle. Expectation of X1 is this is the length of expected length of one cycle or basically this is the ex actually expected length of each cycle because of this IID process. Now, whether this renewal reward theorem implies my earlier uh, elementary reward uh, elementary renewal theorem. So, right. So, suppose if you take this R n equals to 1, what is this going to be? M of t plus 1, right? If R n equals to 1. If R n equals to 1, this is simply M of t. So, if you, so I mean basically what we did is we, we, we kind of took this case, right? C t equals to M t, C t equals to M t is what the case we had gotten earlier. That means earlier we said that in each cycle my reward is 1, we said, but that is not necessary, right? I, my reward could be something different. This is why this is like a more generalization of the. Uh, elementary renewal theorem we had. So, the, the generalization here is in each cycle the reward could be not just unit, it could be something else and also it could be stochastic. Now, this, this re result makes sense that is the average reward is going to be 
average reward divided by average cycle length. Does this make sense? So, you are saying Ct is what? Total reward accumulated till time t and you are dividing that by total time. So, that is could be same as saying that okay, you just focus on one cycle and one and the reward in that cycle and just look at the average in that cycle. So, this if you look at this, this is also saying kind of average reward per unit time, right? The numerator is the expected reward, denominator the expected time. So, in a sense this is expected reward per unit time and this is also asking that, but this is asking over a total time t. Now, the because we are in this process, I could as well focus on one cycle and get the information from that one cycle. Okay. Now, if you now want this apply this kind of results to what I said you are a plant manufacturing unit or something. Now, you have this kind of information average. So, this is like a random quantity right the total reward you got average total reward you got. But now, you kind of know what is your expected reward per cycle and what is the expected cycle length based on that you can directly get this. And if you want more reward what you could do is you can I have to design your plan such that you are getting more reward per cycle or you have to design such that your cycle time is smaller. Right? So, so this is all about uh, this renewal process and renewal reward theorem I wanted to say. So, there are uh, other aspects to this which is there in the book like uh, you can uh, read into that. For example, we have defined a process aging process and we have defined another process right what it is called. Yeah, we have time residual process and age process right. So, all we can do some analysis on those process also we can derive those process also. So, in the book the properties of those processes are given. So, you should understand uh, how, I mean, this those properties one can derive based on similar pro, similar ideas what I have we have discussed in the class. You can just read yourself and you will get. Okay, so we will stop here.